Building a Combat Robot. This is Parasite, the most recent step in my exploration of combat robotics. To find out how I got here, we must go back to November of last year with my first small-scale attempt at a fighting robot. For as long as I can remember, I have been interested in combat robotics, and have always wanted to build my own. There are a number of weight classes in combat robotics, from tiny 150 gram fairy weights all the way up to massive heavyweight robots weighing 250 pounds. A little over a year ago, I had the opportunity to join a heavyweight BattleBot team working on a robot called Doom. From my team, I learned a number of important things about combat robotics, as well as got connections to more localized competitions. After one of the craziest competitions I've ever been part of, I was inspired to build my own small version that would be reasonably cheap and low stakes for a starter bot. Besides the number of unproven robot versions that I'd built a long time ago, I figured out that building a small 3-pound beetleweight robot would be a good size to begin with because it could be done with little to no cost using bits I already had lying around from other projects. I wanted to prioritize protecting the internals by using a bent and angled armor shell that would deflect an opponent's spinner, much like the armor of my team's heavyweight bot. It also had its own spinner in the undercutter configuration which is out of scrap steel plate. I called it Magic Blue Smoke, in reference to what happens when electronics get fried. With some blue paint and decals, it was ready for its first fight. Checked in and lined up for its first fight against a robot named Droopy, I could see that Magic Blue Smoke stood little chance against the uncontrolled chaos of my opponent. Fight! Predictably, the match was over rather quickly and my robot had sustained a lot of damage. After rushing to replace the damaged parts, it was time for its second match against a robot called Raider. Three, two, one, fight! <laughs> This time was a very close match that went to a judge's decision, but because my robot maintained mobility through the whole match, it was declared the winner. This partial success of my first robot gave me several ideas for improving the design for the next competition that would be four months later. Taking some inspiration from my first rival, Droopy, who went on to win the entire competition, I designed my own double spinner bot, with the key difference being that it had drive wheels instead of more chaotic gyro walking. It was also four times as big, being a 12 pound hobby weight bot called Double Trouble. Double Trouble used a much more powerful drive system, and hub motors inside of its spinners to avoid using a belt, which consistently failed in the last robot. Although a good idea on paper, these hub motors would prove to be Double Trouble's undoing, requiring a very low system voltage of only 11.1 volts to not over speed. At this low voltage, the motors required special speed controllers to even start or overcome the friction of the large hollow shaft. Once the robot was assembled, it was time to bring it to the arena for testing as it would be too dangerous to test in the yard. Its first hit was extremely promising, delivering a deadly hit to a mock-up armor box. However, it took its own damage as well, with the shock of the hit cracking one of the hub motor magnets. Its small wheels and low ground clearance also made it repeatedly get stuck on the uneven surface inside the arena. To fix this, I printed much larger ribbed wheels with built-in gear teeth to allow for extra pushing torque. I also potted the motor magnets and cores in epoxy to make them more impact resistant. Even with these upgrades, there is still one critical weakness. Because this robot has such wide and heavy spinners, so they took time to get up to speed, up to 20 full seconds to reach full operation and not overload the power system with several hundred amps. Out. 
with this issue in mind, and no more time for changes, it is time for Double Trouble's first fight against a hammer saw called Usurper. Two, one, go! Right, we'll Here comes Double Trouble. Within just a couple of seconds, before the spinners could even get spinning, Double Trouble is pinned in a corner and part of its frame is instantly ripped apart. With only minutes to fix this damage, another builder generously let me use a titanium scrap to mend the cut frame for the next fight. Now in the loser's bracket, set to fight against a literal steel tube named Tube Richard, I thought Double Trouble still might have a chance. Unfortunately, Tube Richard's hard shell ended up shattering the front spinner motor, and with effective lifting forks and a strong drive system, pinned Double Trouble in a corner with no means of escape. Double Trouble's hard losses, coupled with multiple mechanical failures, meant that it would not be rebuilt, and instead its parts would be put into a completely new robot design. After a long time of putting this project to the side, I finally came up with a completely new robot idea that in theory could solve all of Double Trouble's design issues and at least be a little bit more successful. This new robot would use a vertical spinner at the end of a retractable punching arm, inspired by the retractable launching jaws of parasitic mosquito larvae. This led to the name Parasite a very fitting and intimidating name for such a destructive robot. So I decided to use a wide wedge chassis and an aluminum base plate with TPU uprights and titanium and UHMW plates for armor. This led to a robot that resembled a cross between the BattleBots Valkyrie and Tantrum. After some initial drive testing, the laser cut components came, including a set of large rotating forks that were designed to lift up and hold an opponent in punching range. The earliest version used the motor at the end of its spinner arm and a large high torque motor with a Dyneema cable around a capstan to drive the punching motion. Unfortunately, this first version frequently got jammed and was unable to retract properly, leaving the spinner completely exposed. However, the spinner seemed to be performing well, even exceeding the tip speed limits of the competition, meaning I had to throttle cap my receiver to prevent disqualification. The solution to the puncher jamming was to use a much smaller punching motor with a reduction gear box and a larger capstan pulley. You can do fewer wraps to exert the required force and still slip that when you reach the end of travel. This had promising results, but there's still another larger issue with the moving spinner motor. Its wires were extremely vulnerable to being cut, jammed, or pulled out completely with the comparatively large travel of the puncher. This led to a redesign of the spinner drive that used an inboard motor with a long belt to transmit torque without any wires going to the puncher. This initially had less than ideal results with a different motor having difficulty starting through all the new belt friction. A couple of motors later, the spinner seemed to be starting consistently, with a full spin-up in about 3 seconds. With everything working, it is time to test its destructive potential. Unfortunately, when it appeared that everything was going well, the spinner ESC suddenly died. With the new ESC, it showed some weird inconsistencies and it pulsed and sometimes completely reset, requiring a power cycle to turn back on. Apparently, looking deeper into the circuitry, the dying oh, ESC sent no. a voltage spike through the signal wires, which fried most of the low-voltage circuitry oh, on the spinner no. side. After placing a bunch of things, including the BEC and receiver module, is ready to test again against a variety of materials. After a successful set of tests and a bit more driving practice, the day of the fight finally came around. Showing up early at the Orange County Maker Fair, I set up my workstation and got Parasite past the safety checks. It's now time for the
fighting a robot called Fist Bump. My robot quickly took damage from an initial hit. As it turned out, my punch response also had a significant delay, never connecting properly until a weapon-on-weapon -weapon hit shattered the spinner bearing. Parasite also suddenly lost power to the left wheel as a result of an impact-related gearbox failure. However, it continued to crab walk its way through the fight with a disabled spinner as my opponent became stuck from an earlier glancing blow that bent the wheel bracket. Parasite barely claimed the victory and needed some major repairs in the short amount of time before the next fight. So in what could only be described as a mad scramble, I managed to replace all the damaged components but one. The stripped left gearbox, of which no replacements were on hand. So I hammered back on the stripped sun gear and hoped for the best against one of the most intimidating robots, Full Court. Even though Parasite had been designed to chop large control bots like this right in half, its weakened drive system and off-centered charge had it quickly overpowered as it was slammed against the back wall with sufficient force to dislodge the power plug from my receiver battery. Parasite sat there, powered on but unresponsive. With only one more fight left in the loser's bracket, I had to make it count. Set against a robot called Steve, I didn't think I had much to worry about. That is until I saw that it was a literal full-size pickaxe being twirled around by a set of huge but exposed hub motors. In this excitingly destructive fight, when I had disabled the drive motor and nearly chewed through the handle of Steve's pickaxe, the second drive gearbox decided to give out, leaving Parasite stuck, spinning and punching in frustration as the countdown ran out. With no more fights left, I was able to enjoy some of the other interesting robot designs as I packed up my setup. Even though Parasite's design was very promising, there are still a number of things that need to be fixed before considering putting it back in the ring. Primarily. More reliable and better shock isolated gearboxes is the main thing that would have helped in all three fights. Also, more responsive and powerful punches absolutely required if I am to continue using this design. Some key takeaways of this experience is that combat robotics is extremely difficult to get right, making experienced builders even more respectable. Second, it is often more about the fun and community rather than the actual destruction. With all the builders sharing resources, helping each other, and giving design tips for not ripping your robot to shreds in the ring. I also saw all varieties of robot, from the scrap bin special to precision instruments of destruction, and sometimes even the simple designs would go on to do really well. This video is not among the usual propulsion related subjects, so like and subscribe if you want to see more of it. Thank <laughs> you.